will probably have to be the folly of follicles. <laughs> it dates back to the 1800s. We actually dissect some of Jesus Christ's hair. <laughs> and we take it and we dip it in some olive oil. And if you lift it up, the sheen it gives off, you can actually see if the, the different the molecules in the hair. And that will tell you if you have a true hair from the body of Christ. And if you put it under the microscope, depending on what shape those hair follicle subparticles are, you can tell if it's from, from the head or, or from the armpit. I don't like whispering. Please stop. <laughs> or it's from the, the arm or from the nether regions or from his legs. Or his toes. I got a toe hair one time. It was a great seminar. Oh, I do teach a seminar in, in not next spring, but the spring after, like 2017, about toe hair. It's called the hair under the toe. <laughs> hair actually does grow under the toe. Did you know that? It's there. Go home and check. It's there. Your best-selling children's book, The Tortoise and the Hare. Actually, it's not the tortoise and the hare. It is the cellulical, I don't remember. You know, I only spent three years on that dissertation. But it, it was a good cellie. You see, the children really like the, like the pictures. I did the pictures myself. So, follicle. Yes, you have a question. This is just for the record. Can you tell me your name and uh, your various degrees and titles at the university? Oh my, let me get my fingers and toes out. They're all hairy. Um, my name is Cynthia Roberts and I have a PhD in hairology and another PhD in nephalicology. And then I have several sub PhDs, that's a thing, in. Um, it's different categories of hair, like the hair down there, that's a class I teach next fall, is about the hair down there. Your newsletter, The Herald. Harold is actually a personal friend of mine. He did <laughs> donate a lot of hair to hair down there. It's a great cause if you would like to donate. I have a card. Feel free to call me. And what does that go to? The hair down there, it goes to the hair down there program. It teaches you more about the hair down there because some people don't know this hair down there. It's there. Go home and check. It's there. Artificial pubic waves. We don't believe in artificial pubic replacements. I feel if, if you've lost that privilege of having your hair down there, you don't deserve it because it's a beautiful, beautiful subject. Nothing has that curl. You're not getting that back. You're just giving it away. Some kind of sexual preference. It's stupid. You know Jesus did it with hair down there. It's a thing. It's there. Go home and check. Anyways, I have another subcategory. I, I mentioned the toe hair. And um, I, I do do a special on arms. I don't do waxes. I feel like that's unnatural. I will trim. I do have trimming services. I have a card. Feel free to call me. It's a good experience. I'm very gentle. I use a, a high fashion razor comb. It's got state of the art knives. Like little, little baby knives. Like on each little comb string. I don't know what my voice is doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I oh, also, yes, <laughs> you know, hair grows that. It's that. Go home and check. <laughs> throat hair. So weird. I, um, ma'am, I feel, I feel like you're challenging me. <laughs> I would appreciate it if you would stop. I know what it's called, and it's not called that. It's called throat hair. <laughs> so, 
and stuff. They're also called mogul cords. Those are those are a hair. That's a follicle. A very thick follicle. You like the spine? Dr. No. Roberts, I have a <laughs> yeah. question. What is your opinion on the powdered wig movement of the 16th and 17th century? I have a special class on the powdered wig movement of the 16th and 17th century. I do a special on Benjamin Franklin. The The powdered wig movement is the category, and then Benjamin Franklin is the subcategory. I feel like he pulls it off the best. Um, but that is offered not next cool. fall, but the fall after, like fall of 2017. Fall of 2016, yes. Do you offer any summer classes? I do offer summer classes. <laughs> Thank you for asking. What are you interested in? Give me one specific. I'd have to go look in my course book. Your equine class, remember. the hair mare. I'm sorry. So oh, the, the, the hair is used in, like, brush combs. Oh, the brush era hair. <laughs> That is a personal favorite, you see. They typically use hog hair. Hog hair? It's a good hair. It's there. Go home and check. <laughs> it's under your hogs. Your hog hair. Well, we also have specialized in a new paintbrush. Don't tell anyone. It's a secret. Of a human hair brush. Not a big brush. That's too many follicles. <laughs> oh, can't waste that many. Not for science. Maybe for art, but not for science. Oh, science. Um, I also, I, I just personally painted with them. They're very smooth. It's, if you, if you wash them particularly before you place them in the metal glass, they create a beautiful cohesion of follicles. Again, if you dip it in ink rather than paint, I find it creates very clean stream lines. You can really get your good surrealism with that. Yes. Do you teach any courses on animal hair? Oh, I have a subcategory for a few different favorite animals. You see, I have one for elephants. You see, people don't think elephants have hair. But really, they have a lot of hair. Oh, so much hair. I love going to the circus and looking at their hair. I just, I kind of go there and, you know, they have the line for the little elephant rides. You see, I wait in line just so I can get up there. I don't ride it. I'm a little scared of heights and they're really tall. So I just, I put my hands on the elephant's stomach. I just soak it in. I'm never going to feel a hair like that. I don't know if I can feel another elephant, but they usually yell at me because I didn't like it. And I just got the hair like that. But it's very coarse and fine at the same time. And, and if you move your hands back and forth, it's kind of like rubbing your hands on a really... Really raggedy cat. One of my favorite feelings. I have several raggedy cats at home. The names are Raggedy Cat 1, Raggedy Cat 2, Raggedy Cat 3, Raggedy Cat 4, and Steve. <laughs> Yes, you have a question. What are your opinions on styling products? Styling products? The, the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. What is that? That summer's eve? It's supposed to be good for your pH balance? Screw your pH balance. If you can't keep your balance going, you don't deserve to have your down there hair now, do you? No. Wash that with some all-natural products. Like soap. <laughs> Dirty hippies. <laughs> Disgusting. Is there anything else that won't put me in a bad mood? Devil. <laughs> I think that's it, Dr. Good. Roberts. I think oh. this has been a very good Q&A. Well, thank you.
Thank you. I appreciate all of your questions. I will be here. My office hours are on Monday and Wednesday and Friday from 11 to 3.30 in the third level of the science building, the new wing, the west wing. Um, on Wednesdays, I have my cat, so please come, come and feel them and you'll have a sort of similar event as the elephants. It's great. I'm watching you, though. If you come to my door, I have hair traps, so... Traps. <laughs> if you want to keep your down there hair, I would stray away. It's there. Go home and check. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very much.